Finn is how old? Mwah. He's just seven months. Mwah. And has he have ever slept in the crib? No. He had never slept in the no. crib, okay. I'm ready for bed. Well, up I'm to this point, Finn and I have been sitting in the same room, um, oh. either in the bed with me or in his bassinet. And I would like to get him to sleep in his own crib now. He's starting to sleep long um, spans through the night. So I'd like to reclaim my bed back and get him in his own room. So Alyssa is uh, the mother of four children and her youngest seven month old Finn is ready to transition from co-sleeping. So this is something I've worked with a lot of families and it really is very different for every family. No two babies are the same. Part of the transition because of co-sleep and what I would suggest is that we bring the crib up to the bed and that you actually sleep in the bed with baby in the crib. He clearly doesn't mind the crib at all at this point, you know. Things could change but may not be as traumatic as you think it's going to be. I would expect mom to put the baby in the crib but to stay in the room with him uh, to put the bed beside the crib and, you know, gently soothe the baby through that traumatising change. Depends also on you as a person, right? I prefer to try and soothe him while he's in the crib. Let him know you're there, hand through the bar, you know, stroke his face, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I have let him cry out for a little bit, but he just doesn't seem to calm down. And so that's when I go in and I get him. Sometimes I feel like I it's time though. I would like to thing. reclaim my bed, have some bedtime with my husband now. It's time, it's time. <laughs> so see, you can do it, he's asleep. Will you come back tonight? I'll be back tonight. There's nothing sweeter than a sleeping baby. I love that, especially when they're not sleeping beside you sometimes. Nanny Rabina is here to help us out with our co-sleeping adventures. So I said to you right off the top, I had both of mine uh, with me for three months before I transitioned them to the crib. And the transition was pretty bad with the first, not so bad with the second. So it's just about following a few steps. You say your first tip is do it with care, do it slowly. Well, you know what, it's a change. And anything you do with babies, babies will cry and fuss, they don't like change. Right. It doesn't always mean, oh, put the baby back and let's try again later. It's just change and they have to get used to the change. Yeah. So you do it very slowly so it's less traumatizing for the baby. And you know, what you've just said is a very valid point. What works for one yeah. may not work for another. And I think a lot of parents think, oh, it was really easy with the first one. Mm -hmm. And they expect it to be easy for the second one. You know what, no two babies are the same, so it's not always that way. That's yeah. right. Okay, so they all, uh, they all differ. Don't expect the same thing for each baby, but ex expect the fussing. Um, and, and you mentioned that right off the top, but how much fussing is acceptable? Like at what point do you say, okay, enough, I can't handle this anymore? Because I do remember laying there beside Leo with major anxiety, like sweating, because the baby's in the nursery screaming his face off, and we're thinking, at what point do we go in there? Oh, we can't go now, because it's been 25 minutes of yelling, and then he'll know that he's got to go 25 minutes strong <laughs> before he gets us to come over. It so, is so true. How do you know? It is so true. Do you know, I think every case is different, and I think it's how much you you can take yeah you know before anxiety anxiety sets in with you mm -hmm. and you start to feel I'm not comfortable with this anymore then you have to deal with that you know yeah. it's like okay I can't take it anymore I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna you know do whatever it is whether you bring him back to the bed or you're soothing him one of the things that I would suggest though is mm -hmm. trying to avoid that whole once you've made that transition actually bringing the baby back mm -hmm. you know you really want to work on soothing the baby in the crib if you can yeah pick him up at the last resort calm him down put him back in yeah you know but there are some steps Tracy you can do kind of leading up to that transition okay so the baby actually gets used to the crib and that is like when you're drawing the curtains open changing you know putting clothes away Stop laying the baby in the crib mm -hmm. so the baby actually gets used to those surroundings. If he's been in your bed or a bassinet even and he's not used to the crib, that alone is like, whoa, what is this? Right. You know? So if he gets used to that from a very young age, and we just say lie him in there while you tidy up the nursery. Yeah. You know, then he's a little bit familiar with it when you do make the transition. It'll make it a little easier. Also, start with naps, right? We started with naps. Yeah. So daytime naps. Daytime naps. Go into naps. the crib so that you can get used to it. And then at night, we'll still sleep together. And then eventually, it was like, oh, I know this crib. Yeah. Right? <laughs> because hope. they've been there, you hope. <laughs> you hope. Well, some babies will do that. And as I said, some babies, and many babies actually, will transition with a little fussing. Yeah. There are those babies that are like, 
I'm not taking any of this. You're right. I mean, you're bad, and I'm probably going to stay here till I'm seven, eight, yeah. nine. Yeah. There are those. Mm -hmm. I, I'm actually responsible for that happening. Did I confess that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Family went away, brought the baby into the bed, and mum told me she was there till she was seven. <gasps> you did it? I did it. <laughs> mum and dad were on a holiday. I'm glad you're telling us this. I did. Mum and dad. That's no, this cool. is where I get my experience from. It's like yeah. when you do that, be prepared. It's over. Be prepared. How long might you spend in that nursery with that crib trying to get that baby to stay? So you notice in the tape, uh, the mother had her hand through the crib. Could you spend the whole night there? <laughs> well, and gotta, you're sleeping I'm, I'm on the ground? Because the chances of that happening, again, sorry moms, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, mm -hmm. but that all took place and the baby really did settle in the crib for the first time mm -hmm. within probably five or 10 minutes. That's I amazing. Say, it was. And I think, I think mom was more anxious about that happening than the baby was. The baby's like, had enough with sleeping with you, put me down and let me sleep. Yes. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, you know, you put in your hand through, it could go on much longer. Every baby's different. You could stay there. You could end up staying there for the night. Oh, God. And that's okay to start with, Tracy. Yeah. You've got to sleep in the bed beside the crib, put your hand through, calm the baby every time the baby wakes up, and eventually you slowly go back to your own bed. Right. But in the first few days, you may want to end up sleeping there because chances are you're not going to get a, a lot of sleep in the, in the, in the first couple of days. Baby wakes the baby struggles to put himself back to sleep because he's used to you being there. Right. Different surroundings, different feeling. That's right. Is, you know? Okay. Yeah. We did the opposite. We just bought our kids really big beds so we can co-sleep with them in their beds. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got to get crazy out of the bed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so you say step by step. Actually, Maya, uh, I, I think it has to do with her age as well. I said just a couple of nights ago, Eva came up and woke me up at about 10 to 2 in the morning asking for her vitamins. So I, I went downstairs and I slept with her for a couple of hours and it was the worst sleep ever. And I said, I don't care because you're my last child yeah. and whatever. Yeah. I will have some bad sleeps and I will have some discomfort if she comes and bugs me every other night or a couple of times a month I'm all right with it so you have to decide what's good with your family absolutely what's good for you you know what suits you may not suit the next person yeah. but the truth is you got to do it for your own comfort that's level. right